That's all right if it does. I'll hold it out there. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to talk about our ancestors, because you know probably know more than anybody in our family. So far, the furthest back we can go on the, on the Cox is John Cox Sr. He originally lived in Gunpowder Falls, Maryland. How far is he removed from you? That was in the area. That's fifth great grandfather. That's great, 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 great grandfather. And. Uh, in uh, about 1777, he moved to what was a part of the Wapaga settlement, a group of settlers that was the first uh, settlement inland from the coast. In what they thought was the off the coast of Maryland, off the coast, off the coast of uh, the colonies, uh, actually off the coast of North Carolina. So was he actually born in England? No, I, I don't think so. I, I haven't been able to go any further back. Exactly, I've got uh, something about where he was born. I don't remember now what it was. But I think he was born here in the state. I can't, I haven't, nobody that I know of has found anything that goes back further. But he, uh, the Waltaugus settlement, thought they were in Virginia until they surveyed the land and found out they were really in North Carolina. And there is a copy of a document that was signed by the, the Watauga settlers that have John Cox and two of his sons signed it, requesting uh, local autonomy or local authority to uh, operate a government. They were so far from the other uh -huh. colonies distance, and it was the first uh, self-governed colony or self-governed settlement in the New World. Really? And uh, he built a house there in, I believe it was 1777, a one-room log cabin. And one of his sons, not one of my ancestors, but a co-descendant, my fourth great-grandfather's brother, later built another room on it and a second floor. He's got a, one of those dog trots through the middle of it. And it's what do you a, mean a dog trot? It's an open. They used to build a lot of the houses that way. You'd have the living quarters on one side, then you had an open area and the kitchen over there on the other. What was the purpose of the open area? Part of it, I think, was uh, uh, it was to separ they separated the kitchen and the cooking from the cabin. Just because it I would guess, get hot, I guess, in the kitchen? Yeah, well, it, if a kitchen burned down, we wouldn't get the whole thing. Oh, okay. That was one of the reasons. It, it was a lot of the early houses. I've seen many of the, of the houses, even in Texas, I mean, some of the eastern part of the state that had dog trots. They built them that way with an open place in the middle. I guess it's like having a porch. Anyway. Francis Asbury was a circuit rider at the Church of England. And uh, what he, is that? What is the circuit rider? That's a there? preacher. That, it's an itinerant preacher. They travel all over the country. Okay. That's the only preacher they had. And when he came through that part of the country, he would stay with John Cox. And so it's now a shrine of the Methodist Church and has been restored to the Methodist Church. And, uh, Bluff City, Bluff City, Tennessee. Now all of that area originally, I believe, was in what they call Sullivan County. But I'll back up a minute. After the Revolutionary War, they uh, they separated uh, Tennessee from North Carolina and created the state of Tennessee. In other words, Tennessee used to be part of North Carolina. That's correct. Hmm. And Sullivan County 
was later divided up. Hawkins County, I believe, was carved out of Sullivan County. And uh, about 40 miles from Bluff City, another fifth great grandfather, Thomas Amy, A M I S, French Huguenot. Now those are the ones from uh, Wells, correct? Well, I, f I understand that that uh, a lot of the French Huguenots came from France by way of Wales on into maybe the Barbados Islands and then on up to up to uh, the American, American colony. But he built a stone house there about a few years later than after John Cox had built his, and there was nothing around him. He was out there in just the wilderness. I believe it was Cherokee Indians were around him. And, and this is in Tennessee? In Tennessee. It's now Hawkins County, Tennessee, and it's just out of Rogersville, Tennessee. And uh, some of the things I read, they had a stockade built around the house for protection. From Indians? From Indians. And later years, it became a, 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 a tavern, a place for people to spend the night, stop over and spend the night. And I think uh, Andrew Jackson and a lot of the famous early people would have stayed in that house. And the house is still in existence. You can see at least two of the stone walls around the perimeter of it, but it's had some wooden additions both on top of it and on one side of it. And when I, kind of funny how I found that house. I, I was trying to drive around and uh, trying to locate it and I couldn't do it and there's five o'clock traffic and it wasn't any shoulder on the road. And this, how was this related, house related to John Cox? John Cox's son married his daughter. I'll get to that in a minute. Oh, okay. But he, that's two fifth great grandfathers. It came about the same time. And uh, as I went back into Rogersville, there was an implement dealer who had his business about uh, a couple of hundred yards off the highway. And he was driving out, he was closing up to go home, driving out the gate, and I pulled in there, asked him about it. And he said, well, sure, I know where that is, uh, follow me. And I said, how about getting in the car with me? He said, sure. So he got in the car with me and we went back out that road and uh, wasn't very far out of town. And we drove up to the Thomas Amy house and there was a couple unloading wood about 50 yards, I guess, down there, down a little bit from the hill from the house, there's a shed down there. And I walked down there and it turned out that this young woman in this couple was an Amy. And she had so she was a relative then? She was raised in that house and still in the family. Been in it ever seen. That's how they pronounce the A-M-I-S? A-M-I-S, Amy. Now, and are there any Amy's still left over in Wells? I don't know. I'm sure there must be. I haven't, I haven't any information about that. However, I've got on two or three websites uh, that have the pedigree of that and I've been able to go back not me doing it, somebody else has done the research and there's no documentation that I can, can give of the validity of it, but you can follow the pedigrees around several generations of Amy and then they play out and then you go back to another place where it branched and follow the, the woman, the matriarchal part of the and I kept following those things out until uh, uh, one time I did this, I, I started coming to uh, Duke of Lorraine. And I first saw a, a Sir, Sir Hugh something or Sir Guy something of so-and-so. And then I found a Duke of Lorraine. And then about two jumps later, I found the, uh, Charlemagne, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, the 38th generation. There was just a bunch of bait fish skimming the water over there, your lure, your yeah. core for that. Yeah. Like something was chasing them. So it went back to, uh, went all the way back to uh, Charlemagne, huh? Yeah, that came, one of that, that came out of the, uh, that came out of the uh, familysearch.com, that's the Mormon's website, and they, they have a disclaimer that they vouch for no validity of it, they only put on it what people give them. Right. Uh, but I have, I have got back into the, the European royal family to another route from this Amy branch. 
I got onto the search engine called ASK.com and, and followed another one of the branches. And you follow them until you reach a dead end. You come back for the split and you follow another end. Anyway. And what are you, and what were Huguenots? What religion was they that? Were, they were Protestants. In, a, in, in France, they were a Catholic country, so they were not welcome. I see. Uh, there was a lot of religious persecution back then, about that time around the world, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, in England, you were supposed to belong to the Church of England or nothing else, right? Yeah, I'm not sure that's the name they were using then. It may have been a Calvin, uh, Calvinism. Anyway, yeah, it was the Church of England. Uh, John Cox, Jr., Married uh, Tabitha Amy in, uh, I think in Rogersville. Well, the Rogersville, I, Rogersville didn't exist. One of Tabitha's sisters ran off in one of the hired hands. Corpse under the water. I think it's probably. Uh, married one of the hired hands, ran off and married him, and they couldn't have that. So uh, I understand that Thomas Amy gave, uh, gave this Rogers set him up in farming business. Yeah. And uh, he, he later gave the land where Rogersville is built. Hmm. I think you lost your hook. Yeah, I did. Now, Tabitha's sister and her husband are buried there in Rogersville, in the Rogers Cemetery. And right next to them there is a, there's a pipe stand and a bronze plaque that says, Here lies David Crockett, grandfather of David Crockett, and his wife killed by Indians in 1778 or something like that. And they're buried right next to them. So they're buried right next to David Crockett's dad? They're buried next to David Crockett's granddad. Granddad. Yeah. But his name was David also. David, yeah. It wasn't Davy, it was David. Uh-huh. And uh, where did uh, where was David Crockett buried? He was killed in the Alamo, uh, wasn't he? Yeah. Now his wife is killed is buried down to Ozona, I think. There's a monument down there in, in Ozona to David Crockett. Because Jim Bowie and David Crockett both died in the Alamo, right. didn't they? Right. Bunch of Jim famous. Bowie was actually sick before the Mexicans attacked. Yeah. I think but, he uh, was actually on his deathbed when uh, all that went down. But. Now, you, you can get on the Hawkins County website, and I don't remember where it was, a historical site, or the, I believe it was a historical site, and I downloaded uh, John Cox's, that's a fifth grade grandfather, John, John Cox Sr.'s will. Where he gets rid of his slaves and, and he had lots of land. And, and, and where was what state was that? Tennessee it still. Tennessee, there it was in Tennessee. Well, that's interesting that both that the Coxes, both sides of uh, my heritage on the Cox side and the Harris go back to Tennessee. Well, but I know that there were a lot of Tennesseans that came into Texas. Um, but I know that on your side of the family, they actually didn't come into Texas when it was still part of Mexico. They came through Missouri, didn't they? Well, that was on my mother's side. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, John Cox was known as Captain John Cox, but I, I don't know of anybody that's found out why. I'm sure that he was called Captain. I do know that Thomas Amy was, in, was an officer in the Revolutionary War. And uh, he also was a, was a member of the governing body of the North Carolina colony. And later, when Tennessee became a state, he was one of the first state senators in Tennessee. And he had, now it's his will, I, I think I said wrong about John Cox. Well, it, it's Thomas Amy's will that I downloaded. Now, in downtown Rogersville, there is a, a building that has a bronze placard on it. 
on the front of it. It says uh, Christian Mount Castle. The Christian Mount Castle was not relative to, of ours then. But it's, it's happened in many of the immigrations into the Texas whole several generations of a family and and several different families that were neighbors came came in at the same time and they but this Christian Mount Castle is a third great grandfather great 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 grandfather of ours of mine. That would have been about the time of the Texas uh, Revolution then. No, let's see. I don't know I've the dates. I, okay, he was a he was a great 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 grandfather of yours. Yeah, but he okay. was but he was no relationship till his uh, till his grandson married uh, our grandfather's father. I see. And, uh, our uh, our, my grandfather Cox, Thomas Mountcastle Cox, is my grandfather, your great grandfather. His mother was Susan Mountcastle. And I, as a child, I knew her, but I didn't know she was my great grandmother. She had, uh, she had broken a hip sometime or other, and she was in a, in a wheelchair. That's about all they did back in those, even in the 30s. She was in a, in a wheelchair invalid. Everybody called her Aunt Sue. As a child, that's all I knew is. Her brother was the uh, pastor of the First Methodist Church in Paris when Paris burned. Paris, Texas had a fire. Oh, back in the, I don't know, 1910s or 12s or somewhere in there. And, and, and most of the town burned, or a big part of the town burned. Their house didn't burn. I guess back then they didn't have enough, they didn't really have water to put them out with, did they? Well, you know, the pumps they had, I don't know, I don't know when the steam pump came into use. Yeah, but by the time you built up a head of steam, the fire probably would have done its business. It isn't an instant technology like we have now. No. Yeah. So Mount Castle, um, that's that sounds like an English it name. It is. It's an English name, and uh, my grandfather Cox had a first cousin in Paris, Willie Mount Castle. She was an old maid. She never married, and uh, she had a coat of arms on the wall in her, in her house, and she she had always told me, said, "Bill, that'll be yours one day." And when she died, we we were even notified, and there, a, there were plenty of the family scavengers around to take everything she had. She had a lot of really fine stuff in like that. Yeah, but if you don't, if it's not in your will, then it's fair game. That's for sure. Now, John Cox, Jr. The next one we have in line, who would be our third great grandfather, Cox, moved to a, to a farm in near Athens, Tennessee, and I don't know the date, but it was before the Civil War. And he had had some land there and had a big family and bunch. And uh, evidently, I'm, I've never found any of the uh, information about the trial, but the carpetbag governor was in control of everything then, and the Yankees were always provoking suits against the landowners, and whatever it was came up, he lost, and they lost everything they had. They were in Texas at the time? No, they were in Tennessee. Tennessee. Near Athens. And so he was not able to travel. For, he was too frail to travel, so they had to wait around there till he had died, and when he died, there's a Thomas Edward and an Abraham 
and our grandfather came to Texas up near an area out kind of south of Bonham, Texas. And remind me of where Bonham is. Is that over in East Texas? Yeah, well, it's over, it's you know where Sherman Denison located? Oh, yeah. Well, Bonham is, just, is east of there, between there and Paris. It's up okay. north of McKinney. And there, there are probably four generations of Cox's buried there in Randolph. It's a little, very little town, a small cemetery about north part of the town. Thomas Edwards is our third great-grandfather. Abraham's our great-great-grandfather. Wait a minute. Right. It's this bird right here, Dad. Look at here. It's a hawk. Yeah, it is a hawk. It may be a kite. No, it looks too big to be a hawk. It wings look too long. It, I don't believe it is a hawk. Uh, Might have been an owl. Let's see. James was the third. Thomas Edward was the great great. Abraham was a great grandfather. Yeah. And the Cox name, do, do, you, do you, have you been able to trace that overseas to Europe? Nope. I, so you don't know if it was English or Irish, because there is Cox Irish too, you know. Yeah, when we were in Scotland, we found out that the Scottish all considered that the Cox was an Irish name. You never just see it in, in Scotland. But. Some. I see him, somebody up there with their dog. Yeah. Nope, not yet. I'm getting a bot though. Now one thing you, you find out when you start researching coxes, there's a lot of coxes. It's, it's one of the, I don't remember what the, uh, The, the number is, but it's one of the larger quantity of people. Not anything like Smith or anything, but it's a. But more, more so over in uh, the UK than here, correct? Do what? More so over in in the United you know, Kingdom. No, it's, it's it's plentiful in the United States. It, every time you you search for cocks, you find a whole bunch of them. And that's one thing. It's, some names are relatively easy, like Amy. There's not that many. Or there's very few Mount Castles compared. And that's to, spelled A-M-I-S, correct? Right, right. But there are plenty of Coxes. Do you know what part of France the Amys were from? No, I don't. Now, my mother's side, there have been several... Uh, Bastards of Daddy gathered on some van. Her, her maiden name was Bartlett. And the Bartlett's, they could, I don't know any further back than in Maine. They came from Maine and there were shipbuilders up there. And one of the sons was, uh, whoops, you all right? I don't know what, uh, whether he had, whether he had a ship or was a crewman on a ship. Anyway, he was impressed by the British in the War of 1812. Impressed meaning um, that was one of forced the, to come aboard yeah, they, and... They made, yeah. that's, that was one of the issues of the impressment of the Americans. And, uh, and off the coast of Georgia, he and one other guy jumped overboard and tried to swim ashore. He made it, the other guy didn't. You gotta watch these rocks, they will just roll up from yeah, under. They do roll with And, uh. Well, you know, the they, English weren't very kind about that impressment, you know, because they had so many fatalities at sea that when they needed to restock sailors, you know, they just pulled sure, into that's, port that's and right. they, kidnapped them. Right. It, but uh, then the, the Bartlett's came to Texas from Georgia. I, I've got the I've got the data gathered by one 
one of the family members. In about what year was it? But I, I don't remember. And what the uh, some of the tales that are told said that the they killed a carpet bagger and uh, and left for Texas, and his carpet bagger's brothers followed him. They killed him in Georgia. Yeah. And uh, they caught up with him, and the Bartlett boys got got the drop on him, and told him they had a choice of going home, turn around, and going back home, or going home in the box. And evidently, they did pursue him, brother. The, the, the guys it. followed them all the way into Texas. That's what I've heard. Now, where that I don't have any written proof of that. Yeah. Uh, now, the uh, this this uh, Branham part of the family, Merritt Branham, his father married a French. We're not sure French Canadian. We're, she, we're never, never quite sure about the Indian part of it because. Can't get so far. Haven't gotten further back on her. Or, but uh, he was he was in New Madrid, Missouri, when they had the earthquake. Okay, yeah, I remember. And some... there's a written account of him riding his horse with his wife on the saddle in front of him. I just had a good ride. Still on it. Riding his horse around the fissures in the ground where it is opened up, and uh, his son Merritt Branham somewhere had met. Uh, let's see, I believe her name was Elizabeth Finley. Anyway, she, her family I think may have passed through there on the way to Texas. He followed her on to Texas. And her father said they could get married as soon as he had a house and a hundred acres, which he proceeded to work on. And he later became uh, the largest taxpayer in uh, Hopkins County, at least one account I've read about. It. <laughs> he, he and he experienced firsthand that that great earthquake. I think he probably, I'm not sure he was born. Now, the earthquake, I believe, was in 1911. I mean, it's 1811. I, I don't remember when Merritt was born. I'd have to check the record. Out. Which one was it that you said was on the horse? His father. His father, okay. I, I'm trying to remember his name. Didn't you say something about the land, that he said that the land was rolling in waves or I, I something? I read this like in the, when we made the, the cruise up the Mississippi River in a steamboat. I read some of the books on that ship, and one on the New Madrid earthquake said uh, the way that started is just out of a clear sky, and people heard tremendous thunder, and they couldn't figure it out. They heard, you could hear the explosions, and, the, and then the, all the other effects started in. I imagine they thought it was the end of the world, because that thing lasted about six months. What did? That earthquake. Six months? Over a period of about six months. Oh, my goodness. They felt, they felt some of the shocks as far as uh, the East Coast. And, uh, and the, that's when the Mississippi ran backwards for a while. At one time during that, it supposedly uh, blocked the Mississippi where it ran backwards for a little while. But uh, you can still see, and if you fly over, you can see the, where the sand guys are came up in the field. You know, you heard of the ground that liquefying in an earthquake? Right. Well, it spouted geysers of sand up in the air out in the fields, and you can see those round sand spots in the fields today. And they, they, one account I read said that for days it, it'd go through a time when the earth would be just like the waves on the ocean, undulating. And... Uh, And some places uh, sunk and, and uh, lakes form. There's one big lake over there in Tennessee that uh, was formed out of that. And some lakes. My rose goodness, up that earthquake was that wide reaching, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, it had, uh, according to what I read, and I'm not, I don't know what technique they use for 
documenting the severity of it, but they were uh, over eight point something on the Richter scale. They were really, you see there were only about 3,000 people in Missouri at that time. Uh, you know, Missouri was still on the, across the river on the frontier in there. And, uh, I, I, and a lot of people left. A lot of people just left that country. That, you know, we, there, we have a lot of relatives still up there in Missouri. There's and what are their last names going to be? Some of them are uh, Branham, and some of them are... Well, there, uh, there's uh, one of them uh, has, a, has a web page with a lot of pictures on it around Sullivan County. And see, and one thing that that is uh, has happened so often in the South, the courthouse burned in Sullivan County. They had a lot of the records of, at that time. Now, now, isn't there some story about some relatives of ours would set it on, set a courthouse on fire to break somebody out of well, jail or something? All right, I, I mean, I'll go on with Merritt Branham. Uh, he he became a uh, several times was a. Uh, a local ranger, you know, the Texas Rangers then were all, they'd farm when they'd go fight the Indians. They'd, they'd organize them up and go fight them. Is this the grandpa that, that we have the picture of? Do you have the yeah, photo of? Yeah, that's him. And, his, and, we, and you took us out to see the ruins of his house out in near Commerce one time, right? Yeah, I believe I, I believe we did. That house had people living in it when I was, oh, in the 50s. Finally, fall, it fallen down. I believe we did go out there one time. How do you remember uh, at, at Branham Community? But uh, he owned lots of land. He now he was, must have been a character. One time he drove a herd of cattle to California and uh, came back on a ship around the Horn and stopped at some island somewhere and bought a lot of mahogany to use in his house. He's gone about two years, and uh, he, uh, at the beginning of the Civil War, they, they would, people would get together and, and gather up people and form companies of soldiers, volunteers, and he and another guy were, it, it, Farmed two batches of men, and they went up to join the Confederate Army, and they didn't have enough for two companies, and so they combined them and they elected people. And he lost the election; he didn't get to be an officer. Anymore. So he he was in that for uh, about a year, and he got a medical discharge. He had one eye that was uh, I don't know what the problem was. I don't know what he may not have seen out of it, but. Uh, then locally, there was no law, absolutely none, during the Civil War there. And between uh, Sulphur Springs and Cooper and Commerce and on up to Sherman, there was a there was a real jungle, a thicket. One of them they called Jernigan's Thicket. It was so thick that you couldn't. They said you couldn't walk through it. Even the owner was supposed to have got lost in it for a couple of weeks. But the, during the Civil War, the uh, draft dodgers and the uh, deserters and the outlaws hid out in that ticket. And he was part of a local vigilante group that would periodically go out, make a pass out to that and capture some of them and try them and hang them. And uh, when the Civil War was over, the Yankees appointed all the judges and sheriffs and governors, all the officials in the state. And right shortly, they indicted uh, Merritt Branham and uh, seven other people there in Sulphur Springs for murder. And they captured four of them, including Merritt Branham. Were they just trumped up charges? or Oh, well, they uh, it just depends on how you look at those vigilante actions. Anytime your vigilantes get involved, there's some people oh, I see that, what you're saying. that are not innocent get in it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people they they hung deserved it. They probably gathered up some that didn't. It's almost inevitable. I see. But anyway, they were indicted, and their friends they had help from their friends, and they escaped from the jail, which must not have been much of a jail. And I don't know how long they were gone. They some of them went to Mexico, and they don't know where Mary Brown. Went. 
But as soon as they had an election, all of the officers were filled with ex-Confederate officers. And they came home, and they tried them and acquitted them. And, you know, it's the group they Merritt had... Merritt came home, too? Yeah. And they had uh, doctors, a doctor and a banker, and I don't know, a lot of prominent people there. And they, well, somewhere along in there, uh, Merritt, we've got, there's, I've got a copy of it, uh, the document. He was appointed the governor of the... Here's that bird again. Yeah. De Deputy Governor for the uh, Delta and Hopkins counties of the Sons of Law and Order, which very likely may have been a precursor to or related to the Ku Klux Klan. I don't know. But, uh, and there's uh, there's one legal document I haven't seen it. But there's one legal document that, that uh, Branham has spelled three different ways on it. And when you research in any any family name, you've got to try all kinds of spelling because people couldn't spell back in those days and, uh, or read. And, and Branham has found uh, B R A N O M, B R A N U M, B R A N N U M, and B H R A N N O M. There are many spellings of it. And now the, the Finleys. Now, Mary Branham married the. Uh, her name's not Elizabeth. Yeah. Anyway, he, he married the. Uh, maybe it was Elizabeth Finney. They came from Maryland. Uh, there's, we've got a lot of data on those. And, uh, and there, the uh, Finleys on one side of the creek use two L's to spell their name, and on the other side, they use one L. One of Mother's cousins, uh, Jeannie Branham in Commer, is Mother's second cousin. My first, my second cousin once removed. And since she retired, she has become a professional genealogist. And she is the one that has gathered a lot of information on the Branham family. Professional meaning she makes she charges people yes, to do it. Yes, she does research, and she won't accept anything. She's a purist. Uh, she's got to find the original records, and she has she has given me some of her stuff. And I tell you what happens to a lot of people that research. They'll give people some information, and the first thing they know, they'll see these people that publish that same un information under their name. And she had that happen to her, so she's very reluctant to pass out any information about the, that, that she has gone to all this trouble to research. But she's got a lot of records going back into France in the 1500s, you know, directly documented. And Does she actually go overseas to get some of those? I'm not sure what she's done. Bet she's she done did. a lot of traveling, and she's gone to church records, a lot of them. But uh, Merritt's mother was a, uh, I, I, I hate to quote from memory a French name, something like Trossard or Tro, uh, Trousard, or it, it, it's a French name. And there's a lot on her family, following her family back. She has a lot of documentation, but she has not been able to hook up Merritt's father any further back. Now, they, she says that in San... Did you see that fish right there? No, I didn't. I didn't look at it. Not a lot times they come up surface that way. It could have been a... It's big, whatever the big striper coming up. Uh, in St. Louis Historical Society, is supposed to have a, uh, a box full or a truck full of uh, documents from uh, Missouri that have been untranslated all in French. never been able to make any progress on that. She can't read French. She's never pursued that. But she has, will not release much of that data that she has about the family. I guess I've got as much of it. She released things like that. But, but uh, it's part of her family. Yeah, she's a Branham. 
but she does this for other people professionally. Yeah, yeah, so she just does coincidental. For years, for years, she had been researching the Branham family. And there's some other, there's some other uh, family names in there as, as, they, as you go back further. They all, the Branham married other. Had a pretty good little there's, bot. There's a uh, cold glazer is a name that, that comes up, and it's a German name. It's, and it's, the original name was. He pronounced it, it was K L O C K M E I S E R or something like that. Uh, she has a lot of information on that. Well, I got a pretty good bite a while ago. I think all I'm doing is feeding fish that. But I wish you could have seen that fish that just surfaced. Yeah, I did. See I those did. two yeah. sticks right there? It was right, almost right in the middle. Well, we know there are fish down here. Probably a trot line or a rubber band line would well, be. Well, got the bait there. The catfish probably won't like move around to about the arc. Brandon was killed in a in a wagon wreck. I don't know what happened. I think he turned the wagon over to come back from town. Merritt Brandon had one one son uh, named Tecumseh Brandon that became a doctor up at, at Paul's, Valley, Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Tecumseh, that's an Indian name. Yeah, the Tecumseh name shows up in that Brandon family. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from. Uh, and when they, and he married an Indian woman. I've seen pictures, I've got a copy of the picture of her. She was very uh, distinguished looking, played the violin. She, and uh, so when they would come back to visit, only one of the brothers would let them stay in the house because she's an Indian. They weren't going to have an Indian in the house, the rest of the family. And this, this same article I was reading on it said that uh, when he and his wife came to visit, they both had become so heavy and fat that they couldn't get both of them in a buggy. So each of them would drive their own buggy when they'd come from Oklahoma down to visit here over there around Ridgeway, you know. Now back then, in order for you to be fat, you had to be pretty well off, didn't you? Well, I don't know, well, I guess so. Anyway, uh, now, now Compsey came back, he came back and he, he was buried there. Uh, I went to a, uh, a ceremony about a year or so ago in uh, Cumbie. That's where Merritt's buried. And he's got a Woodman of the World uh, tombstone. A what? Woodman of the World. What does that mean? That's a, there's a lodge, just like the Elks Lodge. Okay. It's an insurance organization. Hmm. Uh, my grandfather, my grandmother Cox, uh, Ellen Cox, was buried up there at Randolph. She was Ellen Kincaid. She has a Woodman of the World tombstone. It's, it's made, it's, it's uh, Stone, uh, look, carved, look like logs. I used to have a life insurance policy from a Woodman Accident in Life. Is that I don't related? Know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, anyway, the uh, the daughters of the Republic of Texas put uh, two memorials there on uh, on Merritt Branham and his, his wife's. You know, I believe her name may have been Eliza. I've got all that, but I, I can't remember all that. Each of their tombstones has one of these bronze markers on there as a, uh, 
for the son or daughter of the Republic of Texas. See, he, when he came to Texas, it was the Republic of Texas in, in 1839. Now you've got on uh, on your grandfather Harris's side. Yeah, my great 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 grandfather. You got some of the, uh, Sanford Holman. They were he, he was settler before. Yeah, he and revolution. he and his uh, two first cousins are uh, fought in the Battle of San Jacinto. Yeah. And did you know that his um, brother was the first mayor of Houston? No, I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, I didn't know that we had, I didn't know that your side of the family had come into Texas while it was still a republic. Yeah, so y'all, you're eligible to be a member of the Sons of the Republic of Texas. Yeah, I thought about contacting them. I, really, I don't know much about it. Well, I, it's okay. I, I just haven't got this priority on it. I is this yours or is this just trash? Put the lid to my jar of macro. Oh, okay. That is yours. Put it in trash, but I don't think I'll carry it up to when I go. It might have been a gar that I saw a while ago. Well, it's got some big and things all right. So uh, the Branham, Branham, is it correct? Branham, B-R-A-N-H-A-M. Well, what they use, what Gene Branham, they found them using B R A N U M, and they were the first. They were the first uh, relatives on your side of the family in the Texas. I don't know. I don't know when. Well, they came, He came in while it was a republic. Well, right? see, I haven't run back to the uh, the, uh, the I'd have to start looking at some of the uh, people that married into the family where they came from. Like uh, my grandmother was Ellen Kincaid. I'm going to start running this back over there to the uh, yeah. late TV.